Hi everyone, Eran Stern here with a very cool tutorial based on Zuckworks 3D Serpentine plugin for Adobe After Effects. This relatively new plugin allows you to take a 3D path and extrude your object along a serpentine snake shape to create something which looks like a 3D noodle. It can also work with custom layers such as text and create a unique extrusion with many advanced controls that let you have control over the head, tail and the body of the extruded object. I found it to be one of the most interesting extensions to After Effects toolset and in this tutorial I'll take you through the main steps which I use this plugin to create this short trailer intro. <laughs> One of the main reasons I like 3D Serpentine so much is mainly because it saves me the need to go outside After Effects and build my graphics using an external 3D package. I know many users will appreciate this as well because if you're like me, you probably like to design and render everything on your own without the need to leave your favorite app. Not only that, you'll be happy to hear that using this filter usually delivers very high-end results and among the pros of these plugins, you can count the ability to respond to After Effects lights, the ability to texture and color map your layers, and of course the support for After Effects built-in motion blur. So what are the cons you ask? Well, it is very render intensive and I guess the learning curve is a little bit steep. But hey, this is one of the reasons I'm here. So let's see how to create something interesting using this tool. If you don't have this plugin yet, you can always download a free trial from the Zuckworks website. I will also make the project available for you so you can download it and track back everything I'm doing here. Okay, so after this long build-up, I think we are ready to start. So here I am inside Adobe After Effects with my open timeline, which already have a background layer. On top of this, there is the four color gradient effect. And I'm using here some shades of light blue and black and already placed the points just outside the comp window to create this nice subtle look. I also have here 10 layers of text which are hidden under the shy icon. So let's unshy them for a moment and turn on the eye so we can look at my basic design. Nothing fancy here, just my regular design for the autumn 2009 blockbuster movies. As you see around the letters, I also placed few stars and a hollow circle which surrounds them. These characters, by the way, are part of the Wingdings font, which you should find on your system as well. The reason I choose to use text is because I found it allows me to use the maximum controls inside the effect. And although you can use 3D Serpentine to create some basic shapes like stars and circles, I can be more precise with the look I need if I plan ahead. So, the moral here, I guess, is to plan ahead, of course. Okay, so in order to get more room here, let's turn off the text layers. We don't need to see them, just make sure they are present on this timeline so we can use them when I apply the effect. So, I'll hide them once again using the shy button on the timeline. And now we can finally begin the creative process. So, in order to use 3D Serpentine, we first need to create our noodle path. Then we can marry it to the element or elements we want to extrude. So I'll go to the layer menu and from there I'm going to choose to create a new solid. I'll name this layer path and set it to 100 by 100 pixels with a white color so we can see what we are doing and then press OK. 
Now I'll convert it to a 3D layer. And now I'll go to around four and a half seconds or so on my timeline and then set a keyframe for the position of the layer. Next, I'll return to the start of the timeline. And now I'm going to change the Z position to start from the distance. Somewhere around 600 or so pixels should be enough. I will also want to lower it on its Y axis as well. So I will scrub this value to around 900 pixels out of the comb view. In order to see what we did, let's just switch for a moment to the right view. And now we can watch our basic motion. Okay, I want to make this a perfect curve. So we'll end up with a accurate extrusion on this noodle path. In order to do so, I'll make sure both of my keyframes are selected. And then I will go to the animation menu. And from there, I will select the keyframe interpolation. And here, I will change the spatial interpolation to linear. This will dismiss the default handles for those points. And now I can select only the first keyframe point, go back to the keyframe interpolation menu, and then set it only to be auto busier. This now let me pull a handle only from one side of the path and will allow me to shape it in an accurate and precise manner, just as I wanted. Using this method will also prevent a common behavior of this plugin, which sometimes happened if the path is going in the opposite direction, and due to that, sometimes it will flip your text upside down. Anyway, I think we are ready with the initial setup and we have all we need in order to take this moving path and extrude it with the Zuckworks 3D Serpentine plugin. So I will go to the effects and preset and start to search for it. And now I'm going to create a new solid layer. This time it will be the comp size and I will apply the 3D Serpentine plugin to this layer. All right, so at first, when you apply the filter, nothing seems to happen on the screen. And in order to see something, we need to define the path and then the shape we need. The first step is, of course, to define the extrude path. This will be, of course, the path layer that we just created. Now, at this point of time, it is highly recommended to add a camera to the scene as the 3D Serpentine can use and react to the After Effects built-in camera. So let's add a 50 millimeter camera and say OK to this menu. Immediately after that, you can finally see the effect on the screen. I'll now take my camera and maybe orbit it a little bit so we'll get a better angle of the scene we created. What we have now is the basic square shape extruding itself along our 3D path that we drew a moment ago. You can of course return to the effect panel and in fact let's lock it in place so it stays on the screen. Now let's continue to explore a few of the options that we have here. Of course we can use one of the built-in section shapes such as the line, maybe the square, you also have a circle, a triangle, a hexagon, star, cross. But I think that in this case, I want to define my own cross section layer. To this reason, I created my initial text design at the first place. Okay, so let's choose this option from the menu. And now under the cross section layer, I'll choose one of our hidden text layer, and we will start with the autumn, of course. And here's a beautiful effect in action. 
Let me orbit the camera to get a better angle, I think, and let's move down to explore more options of this effect. And oh boy, we've got so many of them. So let me see how much I can squeeze into this tutorial. At first, you can decide what kind of head end and tail end cap you want to get. For example, if I choose the beveled here and set the amount to the value I want, I can get this kind of effect. I don't think that this is appropriate to my needs, so I'm not going to use these options on my text. However, if you're animating a line or a arrowhead, you'll find this option very handy and I think it will serve nicely in these kinds of shapes. I will set it back to the flat profile and let's open up the color section now. This will let you choose the colors of the body extrusion and also you can set a different colors to the head and the tail. So let's choose here a dark gray color for the body of our text. And then let's set the head to be white. I think this makes my type very readable on the screen and we will stick with these colors for the moment. Okay, down at the bottom of the effect, you can also choose between few different render options. Note that these options will affect all the serpent instances you have here. For example, you can go with different styles such as cartoon or maybe a wireframe. I generally like the wireframe very much, but I think that for this case, I'll stick with the standard one we started with. Okay, at a later point of time, we will also animate this noodle path using the extrusion offset value above, like you see me doing here. But for now, let's keep adding more serpent layers just to fill in the overall look. One more thing to remember here is that sometimes when you apply a change and you don't get an update on the screen, you can always press the serpentine image here and this will refresh the render and show you the updated version. Okay, so now let's move on and define a few additional elements. I will scroll down and open up serpent number two. I'll disable the use globals because I want to define my own shape here. And from the extrude path, I'll choose the same path as before, but for the cross section layer, I will select the next text layer, which is 2009. Now note that in one instance of this plugin, we can have up to 10 different layers, 10 different instances of the serpent. Each one can use its own individual path and properties. But again, in order to keep things simple and elegant, I'll keep using the same path over and over and only change the layer it revolves around. I think this is a quite unique look and will get more variation for our animation using some other modifiers. But for now, let's just open up Serpent 3. Once again, we will disable the use globals and set it to use our path and then change the cross section layer to the next text layer in line. In order to save some time now, I'm going to skip ahead in time to the place where I already defined all my text layer using the same method I showed you here. Okay, so now we have defined almost all the layers except for the big hollow circle, which we will attend to in a moment. But I think it's time to finesse the look and set some different variations of colors and extrusion to some of the elements. 
I'll start here with the 2009 and Blockbuster layers. In this case, I want to change the color of the body, so I'll identify the first layer, which is under Serpent number two. I will open the color for it, and then set the body color for maybe this kind of blue. Okay, I will do the same thing for the next layer in line for the Blockbuster layer as well. Very nice. Now for the Movies layer, I may want to define a better cross-section quality, and that's because it is closer to us and most visible layer here. So just to make sure we'll get the best extrusion here, I'll set the best cross-section smoothness to a higher value, such as 10. This option can solve the appearance of some layers, so if you're having trouble with your extrusion look, I think it's worth to fiddle with this value first. You know what? Now that I'm looking at this, I think I might use a blue color for the body of the movie's world as well. Next step is to change the look of the stars. I don't like the effect I'm getting through the long extrusion here. So in order to change it and make it a little bit less extruded, I will identify the corresponding serpent. And for each instance, I will set a lower value for the length. I think that a value of two will work here very good. And as you see, it still keeps some of the extrusion visible, which I like very much. At the same time, while I'm here, I think I will also set a different colors to some of the stars. And eventually, again, I will move forward in time in order to save you some time and will show you the final design result. Okay. Looks like we are getting somewhere. The question is where? And the answer is here. Because here, at this stage, I'd like to bring up the main circle and work on its design as well. So under the last serpent, number 10, I'll define the extrude path as before to my path layer and then set the cross-section layer to the J letter, which represent a hollow circle shape using the Wingdings font, remember? Good. Oh my god, the default state just look awful. So let's modify it first by changing the length to a lower number. I think that I will go here with 5. This will reduce the extrusion. And then let's also push it back on the path to say maybe 95% offset. This will also place it behind the stars, which are all under the 100 value offset. And now I see that we need to smooth the shape. So I'll change the best cross section smoothness to a higher value such as 10. I also want to change the color of the head here, I think, to a dark tint of blue, something like this. Very, very nice. Okay, now it's time to start animating those sections into place. We want to do it gradually, one after the other, so I'll show you the first one and two, and then just repeat the process for all the rest. So, let's move up and start with the first word under Serpent 1, Autumn. I'll make sure I'm at my first frame on the timeline, and then I will set a keyframe for the extrusion offset with a value of 0. Then I'll move forward, say, maybe 15 frames or so, and set it back to 100. Let's create a quick run preview so we can see what the first word is doing. 
and as you can see it climbing up using the curvy path and building itself until we can see it on its full glory wonderful i think that i'll also use f9 while the last keyframe is selected to convert it to an easy ease keyframe this will make the animation a little bit more smooth at the end now i can basically copy those keyframes and paste them a little bit later in time for the other serpent so let's copy those keyframes and then open up serpent number two identify the same value the extrusion offset and then move forward a few frames and paste those keyframes so as you can see this will be my process and once again in order to save some time i'll move further in time where i already set the animation for all the other serpents of this effect and now i can create a ramp preview for you to see the result so far okay i think it looks terrific but i want to make it even better and you know why because we have the technology to do it aha so what will make this animation look better maybe we can add a reflection map maybe we can also add few lights to it then we can give it a nice camera movement and maybe add some particles who knows the sky is the limit right right so let's do it one at a time for the reflection map all we need to do is just to define a layer and then 3d serpentine will take this layer and apply it to the whole group of serpents at once in my case i will go to the project panel and here i have this rip chrome image i will grab it and add it to my timeline this image is actually part of another product from zuckworks named invigorator pro basically it's a few gray lines with some ripples over them however it will serve us quite nicely as a reflection map to work with all our layers here so as before we don't need to see the layer just make sure it is present in the timeline and then in the effect window i'll scroll down and here i can define the layer i want under the reflection map option and wow what a difference this really looks cool and honestly it still amazes me that we can pull this look just inside after effects without the need to use any external 3d software bravo you know what we can also add lights camera and maybe some pretty particles that will up beat this even further but again to tell you the truth this will make this lesson much, much longer. I'm sure that by now you've got the basic idea. So in order to save some time, I just want to show you the possibilities. I will do it once again by skipping maybe half an hour into the future and show you what I came up with using the same setup. So here is my updated composition here i already added a couple of lights i have here a point light which i will now enable and also a spotlight and as you can see the serpentine filter reacts to those lights very naturally you can even add a parallel light if you want to allow these elements to cast shadows one on top of the other but due to a render heat here i think that i will settle with just those two lights which are already without a doubt adding even more realism to the shot in this composition i also animated my camera with some wacky orbit and zoom animation and as i said i didn't feel that this was enough so i also 
added a solid layer with the famous tracot particular which generates some small particles in a circle fashion just to go along and to spice it even better. So with all those elements together, I think that now it's the time to enable motion blur for the serpentine layer and also for my particular layer. And then take a deep breath and maybe a long break and render the final result to this short spot. That's it guys! Now you know where the famous Serpentine River in London got its name from. Not only that, you also witness a quick and easy way to create high impact graphic using this great plugin. I hope you had fun like me and also learned something new. Now if you want to learn more cool stuff or just to show me your appreciation, please check my other After Effects training titles at training.creativecow.net. Until next time we'll meet, this is Eran Stern for creativecow.net wishing you a long extrusion goodbye. Have fun.